Now, uh, we would like to start with Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law. Friends, after several experiments on network analysis, Kirchhoff has given two laws. One of that is Kirchhoff's current law and another is that Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now, let us start with Kirchhoff's current law. This law states that in a particular network at any node, whatever current will be incoming, the same will outgoing. Means, the incoming current at any node of a network will be equal to the outgoing current from that node. Now see, if we have some network like this, then this point will correspond a node. Let I1 is current in this particular branch, I2 is current in this branch, and IT, I3 is current in this branch. Then for this network you can say that for this node current I1 is coming at this node but I2 and I3 are outgoing current for this particular node. So as per Kirchhoff's current law, incoming current at any node is equal to outgoing current from that node. So from here we can write this equation like I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. This is basically Kirchhoff's current law. This law is based on law of conservation of charge means whatever charge is flown in the circuit that is not changed, not variable. Means whatever charge will flow from this point to this point the same charge will be distributed between these two branches. This is law of conservation of charge. Now see that we have some other examples also. In some physical examples you can say that in our house we have this type of joints in water supply system. You also you may also have seen this type of joints in your water supply system. And see if water inlet from this particular point is this much amount, the same amount of water will emerge out from here. So, such type of points in electrical network are called junctions, where the amount of current will not change. Whatever current will be input to this particular point will be, will say will be the out from this particular way. But in this type of connections or points in electrical network are called nodes and for nodes see here if some water is inlet at this particular end that will be distributed at these two ends that is the amount of water inlet at this particular point or end will be equal to the amount of water outlet from this particular point and from this point so this is basically KCL. We have two examples, one from water supply system and another for, from electrical circuit. Now, let us have some more examples. Now see. In some literature, you may also have seen that Kirchhoff's first law is Kirchhoff's current law and according to this law, the current at any particular node of a network is zero. If we consider the same statement, now see here, it is I1, this is I2 and this is I3 and from the statement given in different books, that is sum of current at any node in a circuit is zero, we can see here I1 plus I2 plus 
I3 equal to 0. But friends, one point has to be appreciated here. This current, although the all these I1, I2 and I3 are currents, they are of same nature, but they have some difference. What is the difference between them? I1 is incoming to the node, towards the node, and I2 or I3 are outgoing from the node. They have some basic difference in their nature, which has to be demonstrated or which has to be considered here. If we consider incoming current as positive and outgoing current as negative, then I1, if I1 is considered positive, then here I1 is positive because it is incoming. I2 and I3 are currents which are outgoing currents. So they may be taken as negative. I2 minus I3 equal to 0. The same equation can be written as I1 equal to I2 plus I3 and see we again arrived at the same situation that incoming current at any node is equal to outgoing current from that node. Now let us start with Kirchhoff's voltage law and these two laws are basics of network analysis. All the theorems you will study further that as superposition, Norton theorem, Theorem theorem, all these theorems are based on these two laws. So this is mandatory requisite for us to learn it carefully. Now see, next one is Kirchhoff voltage law. According to this law, in a closed loop, the resultant voltage is zero. This law can be also stated as whatever voltage will be supplied in the loop, the same will be dropped in the elements available in the loop. Let us have some example here. Let this voltage be V, this resistance be R1 and R2. R2, since the circuit is closed and is excited also, it will have some current. That current may flow clockwise or anticlockwise. That depends on polarity of the voltage. As you know, from voltage source, the current flows from high potential side to low potential, potential side. So it is very clear that in this say, circuit, current will flow like this. Now one more concept is there, as everything flows from high side to low side, like gas flows from high pressure to low pressure, like temperature flows from high temperature to low temperature, like anything, like water flows from high altitude to low altitude, current also flows from high potential point to low potential point. So from here you can say that if current I is flowing from this side to this side, it is guaranteed that potential of this point must be higher as compared to potential of this particular point. Now, the same current will flow from this way to this way, it will continue in the way. In that case, the current I will also flow from this point to this point across R2. So, this can only happen if the potential of point, this point, is higher than the potential of this particular point. And as you know that whenever a current flows from a resistance, it will produce some voltage drop that amounts to be I into R, that is amount of flow of current into resistance. So in this case, I into R1 will be voltage drop in resistance R1 I into R2 will be voltage drop in resistance R2 and according to KVL we can say that V is equal to V1 plus V2 means whatever voltage we are supplying into the network the same we drop in the elements of the network and this equation must be written carefully and for that 
we have to start with any particular point of this network and we must be moving in any direction whether following the current or you may oppose the current see if we start our journey from this particular point and follow the direction of current follow the direction of current so we must move from this side to this side and if we are moving from this particular point to this point we are crossing this voltage source from low potential point to high potential point that means we are moving in the direction of rising voltage so this voltage has to be taken positive so like this is plus v and again if you are moving from this point to this point this is at high potential this is at low potential so we are moving from high potential point to low potential point that means voltage is being dropped and the voltage drop will be taken as negative so this negative sign will be put in here and what is the amount of voltage drop amount of current into amount of resistance that is i into r1 similarly when we move from this point to this point we are again moving from high potential to low potential again voltage drop will be there and again it will be taken as negative so minus i into r2 now we have completed our journey there is no other term so it is equal to zero and this equation will be finally will be like this v is equal to i r1 plus i r2 and we have learned earlier that i r1 is basically v1 and i r2 is basically v2 so we can say and we arrived this result that the supply voltage is equal to the voltage drop in different elements of network now for better understanding understanding of this particular equation i would like to uh, represent a numerical problem here let us have an example numerical example in this case let us have some voltage source of 30 volt and some resistance 5 ohm 10 ohm and 15 ohm connected in series and forming this particular loop then some current will flow in this network maybe its direction is clockwise let this be now applying kvl we will we can find the current in this network see if this current is flowing from this side to this means clockwise side then we can think of that this current will flow from this point to this point so point potential is high and low and this current will flow in 10 ohm from this point to this point so potential of this point must be high this point will be lower the same current will flow in 15 ohm from this point to this point so this is has higher potential as well as lower potential now if we are going to write kvl equation for this particular network you can see here low to high so it is rise of plus 30 volt high to low this is drop of 5 into i high to low again drop of 10 into i high to low again it is voltage drop of 15 into i that is zero and you will find that 30 is equal to 30 i i is equal to 1 ampere now see if the, if 1 ampere current will flow in this particular network then what will be drawn from 5 ohm 10 ohm and 15 ohm resistors see voltage drop voltage drop in 5 ohm resistor will be i that is 1 ampere into 
5 ohm that is 5 volt voltage drop in 10 ohm resistor will be let it be V2 equal to I is equal to 1 ampere into 10 ohm that is 10 volt voltage drop across 15 ohm let this be V3 and this will be I into R that is 1 into 15 that is 15 volt now you can check this 15 volt plus this 10 volt plus this 5 volt 15 plus 10 that is 25 plus 5 that is 30 and see this is also 30 so from here we are very clear that whatever amount of voltage has been supplied in the network the same has been dropped in different elements of the network thank you